Hey guys, welcome back to Study Christ. I am Shar. Welcome to the next video regarding reading through the Bible. We are on Exodus 2. We have already went through your introduction in Exodus 1. And now, let, before I get into this, let me actually pray over our session today. Lord God, I truly thank you and I love you. Thank you for keeping us alive and well. Thank you for allowing us to gather yet again. Lord, give us wisdom and knowledge over your word. Help us to read it, to understand it, to share it, to apply it, Lord God. Lord, help us to draw closer to you and help us to know more about who you are and what you have done for us, Lord God, in the past time. Help us to be encouraged from reading your word, to know that you are still with us and you are still leading and guiding us in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 2, Genesis, uh, excuse me, Exodus, um, reading from the NIV Jesus Bible. Um, I was contemplating making some changes, but I'm here. I'm here. I'm going to do this NIV. Um, it's a very known and popular and really accessible translation, so that's what I'm going with. Um, and like I said, if there is anyone who has a preference of the ESV translation or King James translation, um, if you type it in YouTube, I'm pretty sure you can find someone to go along with. But of course, if you love just being here with your own translation, I'm cool with that too. But I do believe in whatever is best for the individual. If you're like me and you're following along with someone, uh, your Bible translation needs to match their translation. It just makes it easier. Um, I know my husband's preaching. Um, I'm not, you know, New King James is not my first pick, but because that's what he uses and he reads and studies from, it just makes it easier for my brain. But anyway, now that we've prayed, let's go ahead and dive into chapter two. Now, a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him. So this is important. It was fine to her. She hid him for three months. That's a long time to hide a child. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a paper, a pop, a poppy press basket. Um, definitely a word to look up. And usually a word that I box is to look up the meaning, to look up what it looks like. Um, also for pronunciation, because, you know, basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying. She felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies. So she knew where it came from, right? She said then, his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. So we know why she named him what she named him. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw the Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people, looking this way, and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day, he went out and saw two, two Hebrews fighting, and he asked one in the wrong, Why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, What I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Median, where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Median had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the trouts to water their father's flock. So it's another word that I would like to look up. 
Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to rule their father, he asked them, why have you returned so early today? They answered, a Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Ruel asked his daughter. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zephar to Moses in marriage. Z Zipporah, I'm sorry, it says Zipporah. Zipporah gave birth to a son and Moses named him Gershom, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went to God. And God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. So this is very important. They cried out to him. God heard their prayer. Now, as it said, it, it was a long period. A long period of time, which I tell my kids and I was talking this with my husband that we are spoiled because what's long to us now doesn't even compare to what went on in the Bible. But anywho, let's backtrack. So Moses, his mom had him. She was a Levite woman and she got married to a Levite man and they had a son. And obviously the rule was still the same, right? Get rid of the, the boys. But she saw he was fine. She saw that he was special. So she wanted to save him and that she did. And her efforts were not in vain because not only did she successfully save him, he was found by um, royalty and taken care of. And she was paid to do what she would have done anyway for free because it's her child. So that was a definite a blessing in God's favor in the midst of the situation. Like it's very, uh, it's not ideal, right? Like, if that would have happened today, you'd be like, hmm, what? But it also kind of makes me think about, like, surrogate mothers where they get paid to provide a child for someone who can't. And I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about that whole concept, but it is definitely a blessing. And the child is not being harmed. The child is still being taken care of and, and being raised by someone else. Um, like I said, that's just me. Like, I don't see myself. I don't know. I, I'm only speaking for the moment right now. Like right now, um, I don't see myself doing that, but I do think it's a blessing to be able to do that, if that makes sense. But then fast forward, Moses has to run away because Pharaoh was going to kill him for killing an Egyptian. And also... I would like to believe that him viewing and seeing what was going on with these individuals as slaves was a driving force to him to like, look, I'm out. I don't agree. I disapprove. I've done something wrong. I have no reason to stay. I need to go protect myself. And of course, he goes get married. He had a son of his own. And like he said, he literally was a foreigner in a foreign land. But God's favor followed him even there because a wife was provided for him and she gave birth to a healthy son. And in the meantime, in Egypt, God's people were still being beaten. They were still enslaved. They were still being treated harshly. But something different happened. God heard their prayers. And that's not to say that he didn't hear their prayers prior, but in this point in time, God decides to do something about it. So we're going to find out what in the next chapter. So I advise you all to stay tuned. Um, very, very good chapter. Um, if y'all didn't know, you know now, Exodus um, is indeed probably one of my favorite Old Testament books. I am obsessed. Um Along with reading Genesis, Exodus, it was another book that I was able to read through pretty easily because there was a flow and transition of events. Um, the Prince of Egypt, the um, DreamWorks movie. If you don't know, I love that movie. I I even, it was laid on my heart um, recently because I used to watch it all the time when it came on TV and was uh, it seemed to come on a lot on HBO. But um, in my adult time, I said, Lord, I sure wish I could get that movie. 
And behold, someone ended up giving uh, my husband like a whole bunch of old DVDs that they, they didn't want anymore. And the Prince of Egypt was in the midst. And I was so excited and so, so, so overjoyed. As a matter of fact, that might be the move today to watch that DVD. Uh, that's how much I love that whole exodus, like from beginning to end, all the events and things. But anywho, and they did a really good job um, staying true to scripture. It's not 100%, but it's pretty close. Um, obviously, you do your due diligence with any biblical movie and you read it. Or it, like if there's a book, you read it, a movie, you watch it. But of course, you come back to God's word and you know that this is the true story. Like this is what it is. So yeah. All right. So I did a little chit chat. Sorry. <laughs> Just excited. That's the end of that. Um, tell me what you guys think in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. Oh, we do have a little segment on the side in case anyone's using that same Bible. Let's read it. Um, it's for Exodus 2, 1 through 10, drawn out of the water. Moses was born to parents from the house of Levi, which eventually became the priestly family for Israel. After three months, Moses' mother placed him in a basket to protect him from murder at the hands of Pharaoh. Like the ark that protected Noah, this small basket sustained Moses until Pharaoh's daughter found him. The daughter was ill-equipped to nurse a baby, so she called a Hebrew woman, the mother of Moses, to nurse the child. Miraculously, God provided deliverance for the baby, but he did so through the very one who tried to destroy him. Moses was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and was raised in Pharaoh's house. Moses' Egyptian name means is born, which sounds like the Hebrew for draw out, thus testifying to God's deliverance of his ordained leader from the waters of the Nile. In a similar fashion, God protected Jesus to Jesus at the outset of his ministry from the hand of Herod who wanted to destroy any threat to his throne by killing all Jewish boys two years old and under. Like Moses, Jesus was delivered by God from the enemy and was positioned to fulfill God's appointed plan for his life. So very, 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 very true, very um, decent and delicate details that are in relation to Moses and Jesus and as we're reading through this Bible, we're going to, you know, connect these dots. And it's a very beautiful picture. Um, so, yeah, now that's the end. Um, please invite anyone else to join us. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Um, until next time, I love you all. God bless. Take care. Bye.